such a nice black tea to wake me up at the morning time. Thanks for the air suspension on the Auto L8. It's a little bit hot, isn't it? Have you ever let your car make tea like this way? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chinese families are getting crazy for this car, the Li Auto L8. The order has increasingly reached 50,000 in just four days after it's officially launched. A few weeks ago, we filmed the interior and interior design of this car. Uh, if you guys are interested with that, you guys can check it out, out for more details. And today, we're going to bring this car on the road. The auto has very unique and uh, clear product lines, just like the phone series. So uh, this car, LA, is the iPhone 14 Pro. Then the Li Auto L9 is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I'm a bit curious about the dynamic performance of this car. I can't wait to get into the car and let's see how comfortable to drive this car on the road. To be fair, the Li Auto L8 just feels way more expensive and technological than the Li One on the interior part. The Li Auto L8 has been classified as the family SUV as well. So comfy would be main topic of today's video. But this car has quite decent power performance. Two motors all wheel drive in total 330 kW power output, 620 Newton meter of torque. As a result, 0 to 100 km an hour in just 5.5 seconds. Consider its size and the marketing position onto the family SUV is actually quite good power performance. And now probably going to put on the yeah, this one, the, the purely electric mode and the power we're going to put on the comfy and the suspension we put on the high and even we can adjust the stiffness here put on to the comfy as well the steering wheel force we put in the comfy and all right so now it's under the most comfy mode the steering wheel is quite comfy i can feel it's like you don't need to give it too much force it's just a little bit and then yeah, it's, it's quite light and soft. And the least comfort mode, the first impression given me is the air suspension. Uh, while we're driving on the road, on the street, just feel it glides over the bumps. You won't feel like there is too much vibrations or the road, uh, the, the feedbacks, the rough off surface. Yeah, it's less direct feedbacks on the road. Like this, we go over uh, this bump. Yeah, it just under it's 50 km an hour, it just feel glides over the bumps. Wow. Yeah, it's definitely a comfy driving car. For the accelerator and the comfy mode, we need to push down further a little bit. And then the system would pick up the power. But anyway, as a family SUV, you need to consider you have your baby sitting behind. And then you're going to use this comfy mode. So under this mode, your family definitely is going to love it as they're sitting behind and enjoying uh, the movie. There was sound loop here as well. So that's quite nice for your family. You feel like it's, it's, it's leaning a little bit and then it stops. Yeah, you won't feel it's leaning so much in the bands. For driving under this comfy mode of this the Auto L8, I'd rather sit in behind and let my cameraman to drive it. All right guys, now I'm kind of getting bored with this comfy mode. Now I'm gonna, probably going to turn on uh, this uh, the sporty mode. So everything we put on the sporty. Yeah, the acceleration is definitely getting fast. We don't need to push down a lot more. And then we give it, and then it's, it still picks up the power. But it's not as bonkers quick as the X1 G9, the launch mode, that was crazy. Uh, that's way too much for me. But uh, consider it's the family SUV, the Li Auto, they uh, have the very distinctive market position onto the family SUV. The suspension is a little bit stiffer, but I still comfy. You definitely don't want to drive too fast or do the racing things. Literally, no one buys this car is ever going to do the racing things. Yeah. But if you're driving alone, I think this uh, the sporty mode could give you a, a, a little bit the, the driving pleasure. Yeah. Ooh. I can feel like it's... it's it's getting the, it's, it's picks up the power and the, and the sport model as we go this uh, the rough surface the bumpy road here I can feel like 
there is uh, more direct the feedbacks than the comfy mode definitely personally the driving i'd like to drive uh, this car and uh, at least uh, sporty modes right like this and the sport mode you won't feel it's leaning quite so much in the bands it definitely feels better than comfy mode Ooh, oh you guys can feel the vibrations on this road yeah it did give you some kind of driving pleasure the road feedback actually you can feel more control of this car and the least sport mode the chassis tuning of uh, the auto la is, is tend to be comfy still uh, to be honest the uh, even under this sporty mode if we compare with other like evs uh, uh neo es7 or the expand g9 the sporty mode just as the standard mode on expand g9 or neo es7 that's definitely no issues no problem if they uh, targeting on the the family SUV market. All right, so there is a range over ahead, and uh, now I just turn on the signal and uh, give it a little bit. You guys can see it's actually it's easy over a take that car. Yeah, the power is enough. It's 5.5 seconds, zero to 100 kbps an hour, and nearly 450 the horsepower. That's good enough for such big size SUV. All right, now probably you're going to. Uh, Try the, st the standard, everything will put on the standard. The power regenerating on this standard mode is, yeah, I won't feel too much. What if we try this? The strong, yeah, I do feel a little bit, but it's definitely not like the Tesla, the one pedal driving, this kind of things. Yeah, we just like drive give it the accelerator and then we release is I feel a little bit of power regenerating the force the brain and uh, then uh, the speed a little bit the standard mode and the comfy mode is not too much difference but if you just suddenly uh, switch from the comfy mode to the standard mode you definitely feel the difference as an electric driven extended range SUV, solar motors, electric motors is working all the time. Uh, that's made uh, we put on the purely electric modes or the, uh, the fuel uh, modes and the hybrid modes. The engine here, the 1.5 turbo four cylinder engine, is only for generating the electricity and save to the battery. But speaking of the battery down below here, then this car. It's equipped with a 42.8 kilowatt hour battery, uh, which could give you the WLTC range 175 kilometers. The WLTC range, literally speaking, is uh, more close to the reality than the CLTC or NEDC. So this car is good for uh, city driving or daily commuting. If you, especially, you have the home charger, the charging speed of this car for the uh, DC charging, the fast charging, you can uh, charge it up uh, from uh, 20 to 80% in uh, 30 minutes and the 30 to 80% uh, around uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's good if you, if you close to the uh, charging station home charger, you could uh, charge up to 0 to 100% around 6.5 hours. So if you have the home charger it definitely uh, can uh, use this car for the city driving or daily commuting as uh, you just uh, go back home and then you just plug into the charging port and then you got the fully charged the next day as a ranger attendant another advantage of this uh, uh, technology is the uh, the long travel distance as the, as as we can uh, put in the petrol and uh, it could reach the total range uh, I think a thousand one hundred and the WLTC conditions so if you uh, go long way long travel distance your family sitting behind and then your family don't want to uh, waiting too much to charge uh, the battery and then you just uh, put in the petrol and uh, just keep going keep driving and keep enjoying uh, the rest of the journey although there is a lot of charging stations coming up but the problem is increasing the number of the electric vehicles. So during the holiday or like some weekends, like people, they all go out. So it may 
raised the issue of the waiting time at the charging station. So the, the auto they give the solution is to uh, put a range extender there. So that's the way they're going to solve the range anxiety. Yeah. But I think probably next year they would uh, launch a purely electric mode. I heard it. It's going to be based on 800 volts, the high architecture, high power architecture. That would be nice. I'm so expecting the auto, how they make, make it a fully electric vehicle. When we put the, the fuel mode, yeah, you do feel a little bit the engine start noise, but it's actually pretty quiet. If we compare with uh, the auto one, it's better. It's better sound insulation. I'm not sure you guys can feel that or not. It's just a little bit, and you can feel the engine actually is starting working. Yeah. And uh, as when you're driving, like 40 or 50, the sun insulation feels feels good. Even uh, the engine is on. Now we put on the the purely electric mode here. Yeah, you can feel actually it's pretty quiet. You there's no any vibrations from the engine. The very good thing here I noticed as uh, today's version is the max version, the high end version with the lighter sensors on the top and. Uh, a lot of high definition camera, 8 megapixels camera all around the car. So the autonomous driving could be very good. It actually can recognize the red line or green line. It's quite accurate, you guys can see that. So I'm expecting the CT autonomous driving performance on this the Auto L8 in future OTA upgrades. Yeah. And the current stage, the, the Auto is being able to use the highway NOA, which is the automatic navigation on highway. The good thing is they put the NOA as a standard. So uh, owners and the customers, they don't need to pay extra for the autonomous driving features. I think that's good things. All right, guys, now we are heading to the highway and we're going to test out the highway performance of this car and also the NOA automatic navigation on highway the autonomous feature we're going to test out all right so as long as we can see the screen here all the these uh, lanes uh, roads being visualized on here then which means we can turn on the NOA function the way we're going to turn it on is we double tape down the stock here and then it's been activated you guys see now it's automatically changed the lane for you uh, that's good because the uh, head vehicle, uh, head truck is seems a bit slow and then it's automatically uh, merged to this lane. If we compare with the Auto 1, the Li 1, we have to do it manually. We need to confirm every time we change to the lane. But for this, uh, the Auto L8, they just, we can uh, choose in the menu uh, to do it automatically. I think which is a good thing. I like all the visual things here, like this. Wow, well, that's pretty good. And also, the head-up display right on the front is quite large. It's the, actually, it's the display the lanes, of vehicles, surrounding information is there as well, and the speed limits and the navigation. Yeah, that's good. All right, guys, now I'm driving 120 km an hour here. The cabin noise feels like overall is, is good. Like there is not too much the uh, wind vehicle uh, the road noise, probably due to the insulated glasses double layer. It does the job. Now we just open the window. Oh, you guys hear that? Oh, a little bit more. Oh, we close it. Why? The world is getting peaceful and quiet. You see, now it's automatically changing the lane to the faster one. Or maybe because we are close to the exit, now it's the system automatically merged to the rightmost lane uh, in order to take exit off the highway and uh, to another highway. All right, you guys can see that. Now we're going to take exit off the highway. The car, the speed now is 65, 64 because the speed limit on this uh, ramp is about uh, 60 or 50. So the car automatically 
lowering the speeds to match the speed limits here. And that's quite smart, you probably wouldn't get any tickets for speedings. Now we are going to submerge to the main road. Let's see how it performs. Uh, since the uh, left side, the traffic, is, there was a lot of traffic coming up, and there was a truck. All right, so now we're about to merge to the main road. All right, signal is on. Yeah, we did it. Well, that's the technology. That's the artificial intelligence. Oh, again. Yeah, all right. I, I need to, of course, uh, we need to monitor the traffic all the times as the artificial intelligence or the autonomous driving is not 100% safe. It really depends on the weather or the conditions there, the road conditions. If there is too complicated traffic there, we, of course, we have to do it uh, manually. We have to uh, ready for any time to take control of the car as quick as possible if any unpredictable event comes up. Yeah, but anyway, this autonomous driving feature is quite fun. The speed limit here is 120, so the car now is speeding up to 120 km an hour. Of course, we can also adjust the speed manually here, but the maximum speed of this NOA is, I uh, know, oh yeah, we can all the way up to the 130, I think. Yeah, and uh, lowering the speed. If we compare with the Auto 1, last time I tasted out the, uh, the Auto 1 autonomous driving on highway, is the maximum speed is around 120. All right, so after driving this Li Auto FA for a day, I have something to share with you guys. The Li Auto is definitely a family SUV. The L, especially the LA L9, they all targeting onto the family SUV. The Comfy is always the main topic of them. Even this Li Auto LA is, is quite comfy to drive on the road. All right, guys, here is the conclusion. If you have such a demand for the a big size SUV, uh, six seats, family SUV, and then the Li Auto LA probably is the good choice, the best choice for its value in terms of the interiors quality and also the autonomous driving features and all these screens, the tech things, the loop screen. Yeah, I think that's probably the best money for its value and its size. I have to say the Li Auto are very smart. They are, have a very unique strategy of the marketing onto the family SUV market. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. They are really understand the Chinese family, the Chinese market needs the demand yeah, just onto this category is actually very uh, narrow on the marketing, the market segment. Yeah, but the, the sales of Li One has approved that. All right, guys, check that side. That one is actually the skyline of the uh, Hangzhou city. Now we are driving through uh, this Xixin Bridge, and then we can see the beautiful uh, skyline over there. The night time is really nice. Sometimes they got a light show, but I definitely know for today. All right, guys, now we are stuck in on the traffic. Well, it's a peak hour, six o'clock. You guys can see there. Well, all right, so, and uh, thanks for watching today's video. If you have any thoughts, please uh, leave your comment below. Uh, we will share with you guys more uh, about the electric vehicles in future.